All right. Here is the basic ladder question that we started with yesterday. All right. So let's take a look here and see what we can figure out with it. Um, one thing I'm still missing on this one is a mu n to this direction. Thank you. That's on video now. Dang. Anyway. We're missing that mu n, and this is where we got yesterday. And like I said, most of these problems usually either ask you for this mu, or they ask you how far this person can climb the ladder up in this question. Now, I'm going to go ahead and kind of do a couple of things here. Uh, I think we got everything we need to actually do this problem. I'm going to go ahead and do a sum of the forces x and y for this ladder. And that's always first thing you do on the ladder. Sum the forces x, sum the forces y, sum the forces x. Look for my positives. I've got a mu n. And my only negative is minus that big R, and that's equal to zero. And now my only up is the normal force on the bottom of the ladder. Minus down, I've got a 700 and a 100 both going down. So if we take a look, I've got a normal force then equal to 800. So I've already got a normal force at least, 800 newtons. So I got that. And now it means if I want to find this mu, all I need to do is get this R up here. So I'm going to go back and now do the torque part of this problem. So I'm going to go back, and like I told you, I always like picking the bottom part of the ladder in terms of being my pivot point for my torque. So that's exactly what I'm going to do is pick the bottom of the ladder to be my pivot point. And let's just go and say that this ladder is, let's say that it's 10 meters long. So that's 10, this is 5, and let's say that this guy is standing 3 meters from the bottom. So a 10 meter long ladder propped against the wall. We've got this at 5 and then the person standing at 3. We do need an angle, and I'm going to come back just to make it easy. I'm going to say it's a 60 degree angle on here. Now, if this angle is 60, and this is where I wish I'd drawn like a huge ladder, because if this is 60, then that angle is 30, that angle is 30, and then this angle at the top is also 60. So I'm going to try and jam in a little 30, and you can't read it. The little 30 here. So both of those two angles are 30s in here. So hopefully you know that. If that's 60, then those are 30. So I'm going to go back and do my torque. And this is what gives everybody problems. So I'm just going to do something. I'm going to tilt it like this. Now it looks exactly like the problems you've been working. So let's do this. Tilting it this way, sum of the torques is equal to. I've got a 700 sine of 30 times 3 plus a 100 sine of 30 times 5 and then I'll go up to the very top minus r sine 60 times 10 and I kind of run myself out of room a little bit but all that is equal to zero over here. Now I can already do some stuff in my head here a little bit. Sine of 30 is a half, so we're going to go, and I'm just going to plug it in the calculator here. So let's see what we can get. I've got 700 sine 30 times 3, so that's a thousand, and so there's a thousand fifty. Then I've got Oh, let's do this. Half of 100 is 50. 50 times 5 is, so that's going to be plus 250. Then sine of 60 is 0 0.866 times 10 is 8.6. So I'm going to go with minus 8.7R equals 0. And so now I can sit here and add this together. This is going to be 1300 equals 8.7R. So now I can divide by 8.7, so 1300 divided by 8.7 is equal to R is 149 newtons on this made up problem. So now I've got my R, and now that I've got R, I can just come back over here, 
to this equation, and I can write mu times 800 minus 149 equals 0. So it's going to end up being 149 over 800 equals mu. Looks like I did a good problem here for a mu. So I'm going to have 149 divided by 800, and that's equal to 0.186 for a mu, which is a good-looking coefficient of friction. Nothing out the crazy. And that is your generic problem. I said the only other alternative to this problem is this. The problem gives you mu, which lets you then find this R. Once you know this R, you can do your sum of the torques. And what you'll do to find an R is like the guy in this problem, the 700 sine 33. That, instead of knowing that that's a 3, that becomes variable R. And then we solve the torque equation for a little r equals 2. All right, you've got four problems. There's even like a letter G or something on there that you're going to do. But anyway, do those four problems. Each one's a ladder. And you'll start off with sum of the forces x, sum of the forces y, then do your sum of the torques, pick your pivot point, bottom each one, they'll work out really nice for you and all that kind of stuff. And I will finish you with, hey, hey, come on, Paula, oops, misspelled Paula, I want to marry you, I misspelled Mona, dang, dang. Marry you, hey, hey, Paula. Uh, something, something do. I've waited for so long. I should probably just shut up and click stop. Okay, bye, everybody.